just got the 38s on it and what a difference <laughs> I mean I guess if you if you uh, seen it with the 35s I mean it probably doesn't look too much different but to me it does I like these uh, rough country steelies fucking sweet man good deal I think they were about a hundred bucks each but yeah there she is I'm so happy man I, I didn't build this truck to put the same tires on it I had when I had the IFS whoops there goes the hand I screwed that video up but yeah look at the difference gonna be a Dana 60 in there eventually that's for sure I'm gonna snap my axle in half there's gnats everywhere but yeah what a difference she looked big now. They all think I'm nuts at the tire place. Everybody there thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> Try to explain to them, this isn't for looks. This is for off-road. This is for capability. And like I said, I didn't build the truck, you know, like this, to run tires I was running when I had an IFS. You know? But yeah. Look at that, Dustin. Look at that. Big tires now. Big tires. And you know what comes after 38? And yeah, we'll worry about that when we get to that point. With the 40s and tons. But yeah, hell yeah, man. I am in love. She looks awesome. Just so much of a pain in the ass getting in and out of this truck. I mean, I do it, no problem. I'm got the hop. Damn, 17-inch by 9 um, Rough Country Steelies. And I got the new uh, Patagonia MT-02s, which just came out. And can't really tell the difference at all, because actually one of my tires is a brand new MT, the back uh, passenger. And physically, you really can't see the difference. That's going to end up becoming my spare. I have, to, uh, which I actually have four used uh, 38s for spares. But I'm going to end up ordering another one and another Steely, so I can uh, use that as a spare. I'll order another MTO too. Shout out to Milestar. Loving these tires, man. They ride nice. They ride really, really nice. I'm very happy. But, yeah, it's definitely a huge difference. Sorry about my shaky hands. I have, uh, every disc in my back is herniated, and I have, uh, arthritis now in my back. Long story. One horrible car accident, and a bunch of other horrible car accidents equal your body is shot. It's funny, Dustin, I haven't seen a plane go by. They're up there, though. Every 15 seconds, there's one go by. Because he's out there in California, and he noticed that uh, I live near an airport. I, knew, I live near four airports in this uh, major metropolitan area. There's JFK. His flight path is right over my house. That's what you get when you live in the hood. It's not such a bad hood, but it's still the hood. But, man, look at that baby. I'm freaking so psyched now. I've, I've wanted to get these big tires on it. I was going to do 37s, but my friend gave me, in exchange for some work at his house, the brand new MT that he had for his spare because he went with 40s. And uh, he got the new Milestar, uh, I forgot what they are, like ATZs or something like that in 40. And uh, he gave me that tire. So had one. So instead of going 37s, I was like, might as well just go right to 38s. 38 by 13 and a half by 17. But man, since I've been started building this truck, you know, it takes time. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not even a fucking five-unaire. <laughs> I have nothing. But I got my truck. And I got my bike and my family. And that makes me a rich man. 
Wow. <laughs> what a difference. What a freaking difference. Look at that, man. Bow. <laughs> I'm in love. I can't stop looking at it. Thank God, man. I love the 35s on it, too, actually. I was actually content with the the driving and with the drivability and uh, with the 35s. And I haven't re-geared this thing yet. And I know I had a person in the comments saying that there's absolutely no way I'm driving this truck on 35s. Well, it's almost 6,000 miles later. And it's my daily driver. And yes... I've taken it to Northwestern PA through the Allegheny Mountains. I've been all over the place with this truck. Don't get me wrong, the 38s are definitely gonna make a huge difference as far as acceleration and everything, which it doesn't have any. It's super slow, it's an automatic. Uh, when I re-gear it, I wanna do a Dana 60 uh, high pinion, kingpin for the front, that my friend already told me he can convert to six lug. And then I'll re-gear the rear axle, put some heavy-duty axle shafts in it. Maybe a trail gear center section, I don't know. We'll figure it out. And I don't know what gearing I'm going to do yet. As low as I possibly can, that will match both differentials. Uh, 529s would be the obvious choice. But I really don't want an anemic ring gear. So we'll see what happens. But there she is. I love it. There's La Rohataka. And fucking... I'm definitely taking off the rest of the fender flares. That one flew off coming back from PA. Uh, it didn't come off completely. I still have it, but it flew right off. And then in stacking the Jeeps, we ended up denting my fender. But I think I hit the Jeep's fender, too, on the way down. <laughs> what are you going to do? They're not made for beauty, but they just happen to be beautiful to us. But never did I ever build this thing with the intention of mole crawling and just looking good. It just happens to do that. It does look good. And then when I go to places like where I just was at Mavis, I get to explain to them what a, a hydraulic steering assist is and a solid axle swap and, you know, what I've done to this thing with the hybrid front axle, which is, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen my other videos, but it's actually a... Dana 30 high pinion fully sleeved from an XJ. So it's half inch thick tubes and the outers are from a Chevy K10 Dana 44. So it's what you end up calling a hybrid axle, which uh, was made by my friend uh, TJ, Mr. Foley at uh, Freeport High School. He's the shop teacher there. And he's an off-road enthusiast and creator of these wild, weird axles. But let me get my happy ass inside and eat some food. And there she goes. 38s. Hell to the yeah.